When you're playing online poker, you want your money fast, right? I definitely want my money fast. And that's what you get with Nitrogen Sports Poker Room. I'm talking five to 20 minutes. That's how fast you get your money when you click that withdraw button. That's because Nitrogen Sports Poker is Bitcoin only poker. So it moves at the speed of Bitcoin. No processing times, none of this other stuff. You get it, you get it fast and there's no extra fees. There's nothing. It's awesome. You got to get in there. And if you want to play with the poker guys, we do play on Nitrogen. You have to use the link in the description of this video when you sign up for Nitrogen. If you don't, you don't get to see some of our exclusive tournaments, I mean, our free on. rolls, tournaments that we play in with bounties on our heads, a lot of really fun stuff. Use the link, check out Nitrogen, get you some poker. The PCA brings people from all different cultures together, even though it's located in the Caribbean and it's kind of hard to get to. But here we have Scottish David Van Plew and Russian, I believe, Artem Litvinov. Let's go with that. Going at it on day two of the PCA. And these guys get an interesting blind versus blind pot. So Van Plew only has 23 blinds to start this hand, and it is key to stack size stuff here. The other thing that's really interesting is Artem Litvinov has a very strong hand, oh, and yeah. he plays it interestingly. Really, really strong, and that's probably why Isaac Carlisle suggested it on Twitter. You know what to do, include a YouTube link. You know what happens when you don't include a YouTube I link? I don't. I'm going to call you a garbage human. That's about wow. it. Wow. I don't know. That's, that's, not, that's not really much of a consequence, no, it's but not. whatever. You'll be fine either way. <laughs> We're going to break down this <laughs> hand as we go, so get ready for some analysis. Back at the feature table. We've got a blind on blind confrontation here. Artem Litvinov with kings in the small blind. Just calls. Litvinov getting trickier than the Rainbow Road stage in Mario Kart. Van Plu checks his option with 8-10 suited. Flops a pair and a flush draw. Litvinov bets 1,500. Now Vamps could raise, but with a hand this strong, sometimes you don't want to risk getting a fold. No danger of that. Van Plu calls and hits his flush on the turn. The three of spades. Litvinov has the king of spades in his hand. He could make a bigger flush with another spade on the river. He bets again, 2,800. And once again, Van Plu just calls. Okay, so clearly Artem is in a weird spot here, having underrepped himself to such an extent. It makes sense to keep betting. The really questionable decision is for David Van Plu. Should he be raising here? Is there any way to double up? Is that the only way to double up? What can we do? I mean, it's a weird spot, right? We have a very strong hand, but at well, the yeah. same point, I mean, it was limped pre-flop. We can have anything, and if we raise and Artem doesn't have a very strong hand himself, he's just going to fold. Since we're in position, I think I like a call a lot more than a raise. Explain a little bit more about that. Sure. <laughs> Allow me to do that. Well, I mean, because we're in position, we get to make sure our bet goes in on the river. That's really important, number yeah. one. Number two, because we called on the flop, we have something, right? It isn't like we have nothing at right. all. And so if we raise, what are we really representing? Like, what non-strong hands do we really have? We really are going to have the ace of spades in our hand it's only hard. because we didn't raise pre-flop. And with 22 blinds, we just might have done that, right? Yeah, we also don't have any really ace high card in our hand especially. And that would be the ace of spades you would expect us to call the flop with because that would be a pair or gut shot or something like that at least, right? Yeah. And also, the other draws we have are actually kind of thin and far between. Like King Queen, which normally might be a draw, you'd almost always expect Van Plu to raise pre yeah. with this si with the stack size, right? Yeah, absolutely. So now we're down to like Queen 9 with the Queen of Spades as a move in hand. Right. There's not much. Maybe Queen and, 8. And if Van Plu had two pair, this is not a card he likes. He's right. not going to spring the trap on the spade because right. Litvinov himself could have a flush. So raising seems like something that Van Plu is very rarely going to do with the line he's taken so far. And that means you can't really raise that often for value because it's going to get sniffed out pretty easily. I, I agree. Like we're generally going to get called by only strong hands here. Now, Kings is strong enough that probably Litvinov can call. Well, especially with the spade in his hand. But we, yeah, of course. But we wouldn't expect him to have this hand no, either. And most of the range of hands that he's going to have here are probably going to fold. He's going to call with maybe a jack and better, right? Right. And even a jack might decide to fold on this specific turn. Van Plu started with 23 blinds. He doesn't have to risk them all right now. The fact that he would choose to has got to at least be somewhat meaningful. Right. But his plan, of course, is to try to get all the money in by the river if right. another spade doesn't come. Yes. Because this is a spot that he really needs to take advantage of. We're early on day two or late on day one, something like that. It's a time where Van Plu really needs to double up, and this is a great opportunity for him. So he's really hoping Litvinov can have just enough to call him on the river when he makes his move. At least, though, we give Litvinov another chance to bluff if he doesn't have a strong hand yeah. or put in some chips with a marginal hand on the river, those hands might just get blown off if we raise right now. Let's see if Litvinov will put in another bet with a good hand. A blank on the river, the four of diamonds. And it looks like Litvinov is going to put in another bet. 
Van Plu only has around 19,000 behind. Litvinov bets a healthy percentage of that, 6,800. I don't see how Vamps can do anything but shove. I think just calling is a mistake. If you want to go all in, don't wait, I call. I promise you. You said all in, I quickly call. Because you have short step. Already hasn't slept for days. I think he just wants to move things along. Vamps doesn't do anything in a hurry. I would also like to move things along. I think Lipinov's speech may have actually convinced David he's super strong. Please not slow all me if you go all in. Because I have a... I promise you, if you, if you say all in, I, I call. Quickly. You can call or fault or call or all in. It's a fair question. Much like Free Willy, Daniel, not a huge fan of the tank. Okay. Same question. Oh, oh, it's not, oh, okay, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, please, please, thinking, thinking, don't worry, sorry, <laughs> because, because, because if this guy said me, I, I, I think in call or fault, I'm sit down and uh, don't worry, 10 minutes, 20, one hour, say, don't worry. Yeah. Slow roll, yeah. Van Blue all in, the insta call, and Litvinov not happy. Just a slow roll. I don't think it was a slow roll. Acting so strong, it put me off. <laughs> that is one salty Russian, Grant. <laughs> is that salty? That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. going with salty. He's in pickled. Russia. He's pickled. He's not happy. <laughs> He's an unhappy man. Should he be unhappy though? No. Was this a slow roll? No. This is absolutely not a slow roll. Artem should not be unhappy. He's being a bit ridiculous right now. And Litvinov not happy. Just a slow roll. As was his table talk, the most ridiculous thing about his table talk is that it happened to be true. Yes. You never see that in poker, especially in a big deal tournament like this, when somebody bets big on the river, starts talking, and means everything they say. I mean, once in a while they may be true about their hand strength or something yeah. like that, but the thing that's crazy is this. Litvinov is polarizing himself when he says it's an insta-call, right? So he's either going to insta-fold or insta-call. Now, he does insta-call, but he's supposed to be very strong or very weak, and he is not. No, I mean, Kings seems very strong, especially when you're the person who limped Kings preflop, and you didn't get exactly what you wanted with the preflop raise. Right. Fine, that sucks. But now we're here, and we're under-repped, and it feels like we're stronger than we are because we've under-repped ourselves the whole way. We maybe shouldn't even be betting the river, especially to this size with a hand like Kings. We should probably have two pair or better at this point. I mean, if you think about what's the worst hand Litvinov would be betting for value here, the worst one I could ever imagine would be King Jack, and it's questionable, but it's he might bet that. It's definitely questionable. Sure, he might bet that, but should he call when Van Plu oh, moves in? I, don't th I think these are the bottom of his value range. I think that's the folding part of this range. I think almost certainly, although I understand at first he's thinking, well, I've under my hand. Yes, but of course. But the second piece is this. I've now given this whole speech and Van Plu moved in anyway. It looks like I've polarized myself. So I'm either gonna insta-fold or insta-call. Van Plu decides to move in anyway. I have to at least think about it. I can't insta-call with a hand that's near the bottom of my value. No, of course we can't. And Van Plu actually has a weird decision here. This yeah. is not a slow roll. He's not trying to get a call. He's really thinking, should I move in? I kind of believe this guy, I right. think, because when Artem is saying these things, it feels like he has a super strong hand. Some of those hands are stronger than Van Plu's. But in the end, of course, Van Plu's hand is just just too strong not to move in when we're trying to double up here. We could also expect at least a fair amount of the time as Vampu that Litvinov would have raised his nut flush draws and things like that. So we can seemingly eliminate some of those, although since Litvinov actually has kings, maybe we shouldn't have, right? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have, but, but now it's Litvinov that. and he's like, call, you know, like the fastest thing in the world. And I really, really think Artem needs to take a step, take a second, take a step back and think about this. Okay, so this is what he said. Listen to this. If you want to go all in, don't wait, I call, I promise you. You say the quickly call, because you have short step. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like strength to me. I mean, it doesn't have to be strength, but it sounds like someone who's either very strong or very weak. Right. And, they don't, and he's not. He's not. He's <laughs> in the middle. So when Vamplu moves in, I don't think Vamplu is assuming any fold equity against Litvinov's value. Right. Which means when we have very near the bottom of our value range, we should strongly consider folding. Right. Because there's going to be some parts of our range we're going to call with for sure. I know, I know we have the King of Spades, which does block some of Van Plu's value, but is that really enough? I mean, maybe no. it is, maybe it is, but we have to at least think about it. I don't think the answer is yes to that. I think it's that. a fold too. Van Plu's probably not even moving in with two pair here, by no, the way. No, no way. It's mostly just flushes, right? It's flushes and only, man. I don't think Van Plu has any bluffs because 
Especially the part when Lipvinov says the thing about Vevlu having a short stack. You said Olena quickly go, because you have short stack. That makes me kind of start to believe him, that he's really telling the truth yeah. to Vamplu, that he's really going to call, that it's really a slow roll if Vamplu takes his time here. And Lipvinov should be aware of that, because Vamplu certainly is, and Vamplu still moves in. I think the bluffs are... I don't even know what they are. Like, what, what cards are they? Queen 9 <laughs> with the Queen of Spades. is like Queen 8 with the Queen of Spades. Those are like the only ones I can even But would he ever pull of. the trigger? Would he ever pull the trigger on that? I don't know. Maybe he would, but it would be rare. And if we can only come up with a few combos like that, it's probably not worth it anyway. Right, because Vamplu has all of the flushes, except for the ones with the King of Spades, in, in, right. because you know we're blocking that as Lifanov. But Vamplu certainly can show up with any flush here. The way we talked about the turn seems to make sense to me, so Vamplu should be calling with his flushes on the turn pretty frequently frequently. So now we're just down to Vamplu has a ton of value. It's hard to think of a bluff. I know I did this whole speech thing, but I think we got to fold. I think we have to fold. And then we get to not be so salty. Yeah. Okay, so there are a lot of kind of interesting decision points in that hand. Pre-flop with the kings, just deciding to limp. Yeah. Absolutely, Vamplu could decide to raise the flop or the turn. Litvinov doesn't have to call the river or even bet the river. Lots of interesting stuff. You heard what we think, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments. We're going to respond to our favorite ones right up here. If there's nothing to click on, it's coming soon. And as I said in the beginning, the PCA brings together a lot of interesting people. Indeed you did. And Michael Mizraki is one of those interesting people. Sure. He played a very interesting pot against Joel Micka. We recently broke that one down. You should check that out by clicking right up here. Joel Micka, who finished second in the PCA yeah. not too long ago. If you like this analysis or are interested in all the thoughts that led to this analysis, check out our podcast where we spent a good hour discussing this hand, going into the depths, mining the depths, yes. trying to figure out <laughs> are these good plays or not, and what should these players do based on who they are, stack size, information, image, everything else. It's called the, po uh, it's, what's it called? The breakdown presented yeah. by the poker guys. Barometric pressure. Don't, you didn't forget that. It's, it's also yeah. important. Breakdown presented by the poker guys. It's on your favorite podcast app, wherever might, that might be. Also, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.